Hello students, my name is Alton Lawrence, I teach of Agriculture Science and my topic today is Soil and Soil Fertility. I'll be teaching this lesson to grade 10 and grade 11 students. At the end of this lesson, there are a number of object objectives that should be met. The first one is to describe the process of soil formation, followed by defining a soil profile and describe the major horizons. Next, we are to describe the major component of soil and also describe the soil physical and chemical properties of major soils. Explain the factor affecting soil fertility. Now let us move into soil formation, but what is soil? Soil by itself is the uppermost crust of the earth's layer that sustains life form. Soil is formed from a process known as weathering, and weathering is the breakdown or the decay of rock material over time by organisms or by natural processes to form soil. Soil can be transported by natural forces such as wind and water or glacial actions. In the tropical air that we are here, in the Caribbean, soil is transported mainly by water and this is during the process of erosion. Erosion again by itself is the loss of topsoil by the water or the forces of wind. Glacial action also moves soil from high elevations in temperate countries in the mountainous areas down slope and deposited in lower areas. Soils that are formed and slope in our mountainous areas are shallow and due to erosion and they are normally transported due to erosion or the flow of water. There are three types of weathering. Mechanical or physical weathering, chemical weathering and biological weathering. Let us look at mechanical or physical weathering. This weathering is due to the movement of water and as water moves over surface areas, rocks rub against each other wearing them apart thus making them smaller and forming soils. Glaciers also move downslope, and by moving downslope, these large ice blocks will move along large rock particles and breaking them up into smaller rock fragments, thus creating soil. Weathering is also due to the action of the sun by the drying of certain soils and the drying of certain rock surfaces having large cracks and breaking them apart. Let us look at chemical weathering. Chemical weathering, as we know, can be so seen as in the case of acid rain. Acid rain is a certain chemicals found in the atmosphere mixed with water, that is the rainwater, and are deposited on land. By so doing, this action softens rocks and the roots of plants are able to penetrate into rocks, thus breaking them apart into smaller fragments, which eventually forms into soil. And the last of the weathering process is biological weathering. Biological weathering comes with microorganisms and macroorganisms. Microorganisms are very small organisms that cannot be seen with the naked eyes, while the macroorganisms are the larger organisms such as earthworms, slugs, and certain wood lice that are found present in the soil. The actions of these organisms will cause soil to form. Volcanic activity and soil formation. As we realize in the Caribbean, and the Caribbean islands have been form, formed by volcanic activities. A number of Caribbean islands such as Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica, and Montserrat, you can find abundance of volcanic soils. In the other Caribbean islands, you will find an abundance of volcanic rocks such as igneous rocks that are still present day by day. Now let us look at organic matter and the importance of organic matter to soil development and soil profile. Organic matter, as we all know, refer to as OM consists of dead and decaying plant and animal parts. A good source of organic matter can come from your kitchen sources such as crops or from poultry manure in the, in the, on the farm. Now students, where else can we get a good source of organic matter? As you would have thought of, a good source of organic matter would have been from the re remains of your plant material that you would have harvested from your crops. We can refer to this as green manure. This can be plowed directly back into the soil and the organisms such as the earthworms will benefit from foods that is provided by such actions of the um, plant material that you plowed back into the soil. The accumulation of organic matter on soil surfaces protect it from soil erosion. And it's an umbrella effect now. If you are preventing direct flow of water over the land, 
This organic matter there cushions the water flow and will prevent the soil from being eroded over a period of time, whether in the short term or in the long term. And it's always good to provide a source to prevent the soil from being washed away because the topsoil or the upper portion of the soil has the most valuable nutrients that the farmers will appreciate. Organic matter also provides a source of energy for microbes which helps to form humus. And as you know, humus is a breakdown of the decaying plant materials and animal plant materials that goes to form the soil. This also is very rich in nitrogen and this is good for vegetable production. Some vegetables that you would have been exposed to at your school students would have included kalalo, pop choy, cabbages, and you can think of others that are grown in your communities. Humus not just add nitrogen or nutrients to the plant, to the soil, but also it improves the texture while providing other nutrients, such as phosphorus at times and some form of potassium to the plants, depending on the nature of the parent material from which this humus was formed. Let us look at the effects of soil organisms on the soil. Fungi and bacteria break down organic matter into humus. And these are the actions of these plants, fungi, fungi and the bacteria. Earthworms contribute to soil formation and fertility because of their accents in the soil. They also bore down into the soil, they burrow down into the soil, creating some little train, drains or channels. And this adds aeration and allows root penetration for some plants. And it also adds ears to the soil by the air pockets that are built there. Other, other burrowing organisms such as insects, slugs, and wood lice keep the soil loose and aerated. This is very good for root penetration for some plants. For example, a, top, um, a crop such as carrot that has a top root system. You can also think of other crops that are beneficial that will be grown in a loose type of soil. Can you think of any tubers or root crops that are beneficial? Yes, yam is a tuber that would be good for this crop of soil crop planted in soil that are loose and also carrots. Some plant roots will bind soil particles together and assist with certain cycles such as the nitrogen cycles. You would, add, you would have known that plants such as legumes, based upon the nodules that are present on the roots, they will add nitrogen to the, to the, to the soil over a period of time. The effects of human activity on soil. This time we're looking at the negative effects of human's activity on the soil. By excavation or in man's quest to acquire new land in terms of building and construction, road repairs, road maintenance and road development, we lost valuable topsoil and subsoil. Sometimes the soil that are removed are removed very deep and these are very good land that has very rich nutrients. Also, there's a loss of valuable organic matter. And as you would realize, organic matter just takes up about 5% of the soil components. So if we're losing organic matter, we're losing quite a number of nutrients. It also, man's action also affects the activities of soil organisms. When we go into the natural habitats of these soil organisms and we remove the valuable topsoil, not only will they be the death of some organism, but also there will be a slower rate of creating humus that will eventually go back into soil. Man's quest in terms of plowing new lands for planting of different crops will also disturb the soil profile. Sometimes the land is being overplowed, depending on the equipment that is used or the tool that is used on the tractor or the plow that is pulled along. For example, in Clarendon, we have soils that are more like sandy types of soil, or in St. we have two to one clay loam. These are very loose soils. So we don't normally use a disc plow, but use a harrow instead to create the actions of plowing for these types of soil. For heavy clay soils, a disc plow is normally used, as in most of the sugar belt areas in heavy clay in Westmoreland, Hanover, and um, Trelawney, the disc plow is used and they also use a cross plow method. So it's plowed in one direction and then cross plowed in the other. Then it is harrowed and refined. So the soil profile there 
would have been um, to match the type of crop you use and adequate aeration and um, drainage would have been created. Soil profile. Now what is a soil profile? We have, thought, we have seen a soil profile in action, so we can describe it. A soil profile is a vertical cut into the Earth's crust going downwards. It exposes the natural horizons of the soil. So each layer is exposed going down. And we will look at the three main, air, the main layers, A horizon, the B horizon, and the C horizon, and the O horizon that has a vegetative covering at the top. Now, each layer or soil horizon has a different physical and chemical properties in terms of this makeup. The feel of it is different as it gets more compact going from A horizon going down to the C horizon. The O horizon is just about two inches thick, and that is where most of the organic matter con consisting of the soil nutrients will form within the first area there, the O horizon going down to the A horizon, which is about 2 to 18 inches deep. As we go downwards, we go to the B horizon, and then, which is goes up to about 30 inches in depth, and goes down from the C horizon anywhere downwards, depending on how far the parent or bedrock can be located or found. Now, what is, what is the importance of having a good soil profile? A soil profile is relevant for land preparation before planting crops. It is good to select the crop for the land and not the land for the crop. Sometimes farmers will look and see their neighbors planting carrots and they have a good crop of carrots. But instead of going out there to make a check on the land to find out what type of soil they have, their first instinct is to do is to plant carrot as well, which will provide an income for them. Sometimes this is the wrong choice. What they should have done was to do a soil test and make a recommendation based upon the type of soil they have they have on their property. Even though they are neighboring um, properties, the soil they have may be different. One may be suited for planting that scene, as the soil will be more adaptable for water areas, water logging areas. And some crops are more resistant to a certain pH over certain crops. Okay, let's take a break and we'll be right back with today's lesson.